Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part three of our evaluation of the challenging adrenal mass. We spoke in the first two parts of some of the challenges in benign lesions, the overlap with benign and malignant lesions, the importance of hemorrhage, and we're going to look now at malignant tumors. Obviously, the most common malignancy is going to be metastasis, but let's focus initially on some of the primary lesions of the adrenal gland. When we talk about adrenal cortical carcinoma, it's a relatively rare lesion. We always like to think that the lesion presents with symptoms, but that's not always the case. The most common clinical presentation for a functioning adrenal cortical carcinoma is Cushing syndrome, which is characterized by symptoms related to excess corticosteroid synthesis, including obesity, diabetes, hypertension, bruising, and menstrual cycle irregularities. In females, virilization resulting from excess androgens may accompany signs of excess cortisol. It's important to remember that one of the common IST presentations for adrenal cortical carcinoma is the functioning aspects of the disease, with Cushing's, as we know, being number one, but that's important to remember. As I mentioned, and I'll show you some numbers, ACCs can also be incidental findings. Most of the time, there is a clinical reason or a clinical suspicion. They're typically large. 70% of tumors are over 6 cm. The size of the tumor, pattern of enhancement, and degree of heterogeneity are all important predictors of the malignant potential of the adrenal lesion. Adrenal cortical carcinomas are typically heterogeneous by CT and display mixed intratuminal attenuation an attenuation value of more than 10 Hounsfield units on non-contrast CT, has a high sensitivity for detecting malignancy, but a lower specificity. Contrast enhancement is heterogeneous and may be increased peripherally due to central necrosis. The reality is this article is a very nice article, but the reality is that adrenal cortical carcinoma can be very vascular, looking like a pheo. It can be very necrotic, looking like a necrotic tumor, or even a bleed. It can present as a bleed. It can present also as a relatively benign looking lesion. Those are typically when they're smaller and their presentation is early because of hyperfunction. If you think about some of the mimics I mentioned, Theo, I showed a few cases of large adrenal adenomas. Metastasis, of course, can look very similar. Lymphoma, particularly when it's Primary adrenal lymphoma can look very similar. Ganglion neuromas and ganglion neuroblastomas, those are very rare tumors, but there is some overlap. Adrenal hemorrhage and adrenal hemangioma. Now, in terms of hemorrhage, it's more the point that if you have an adrenal lesion that bleeds, it's hard to tell what's going on beneath it. So whether it's a med or an adenoma or a pheo or an ACC, that differential can indeed be very difficult. So let's look at some examples. Non-contrast scan, large right adrenal mass. You're not gonna look at this and say it's an adenoma next case. It could be a pheo, it could be a med in the right circumstances, it could be a primary ACC, it could be an old hematoma. When you give IV contrast, there's enhancement, but it's not that vascular. There's central necrosis. Here it is nicely on the coronal view. Differential to me, ACC is there. Theo is there, metastasis. I'm not really thinking about benign lesions. Yes, I've seen adenomas that bleed and can look like this. It can be somewhat challenging, but you are in your mind thinking about malignancy. Here's the solid component of the tumor with some necrosis when you look at the cinematic rendering. Here's another example, large contralateral, or in this case, left. It's contralateral to the last patient, but it's a left adrenal mass solid, mildly vascular, displaces the left kidney. You can see it very nicely on coronal views. Things you'll look for are renal vein involvement, which you can see sometimes, but it's not all that common. Here the renal vein is displaced, but not invaded. Displacement of the kidney is classic with larger lesions, and usually it's straight down. Displacement can be left to right, but typically with adrenal cortical carcinoma, it's usually this pushing down, as you can see in this case. And again, you can see the enhancement 
and some of the mottled appearance of the left adrenal gland. You can see it as you go to delayed phase imaging, the necrosis shows a bit better. Again, differential diagnosis, you're thinking some sort of malignancy, be it primary or metastatic. Theoretically, could it be a pheo? The answer is yes, but I am thinking ACC. Contralateral, again, I'm going left to right to left. In this right adrenal gland, large mass, dense calcification, central necrosis. Calcification not uncommon in primary ACC. People mention fat, that's exceedingly rare and usually invasion of the periadrenal or perirenal fat. But you can see here, when you have a mass with calcification, central necrosis, markedly vascular, yes, I could in my mind think about a pheochromocytoma, but I'm saying this is an ACC till proven otherwise. Very nice example. Central necrosis, calcification, large mass, displacement, neovascularity. Here it is on the cinematic rendering where it really accentuates the central necrosis. Remember, central necrosis can be seen also in pheos and in metastasis. Another example, and this is a good example of a case of an incidental adrenal cortical carcinoma. This patient had known ulcerative colitis, was having symptoms of a flare-up. They were wondering about an abscess perhaps, and you saw this large left adrenal mass doesn't have the look of adenoma, modeled enhancement, faint calcifications, big mass. You gotta be thinking about an ACC. It was a youngish female with this ulcerative colitis. And that's a common presentation of patients with um, adrenal cortical carcinoma. Younger females, often presentation is Cushing's, but not always gonna be the case. And again, showing you more images so you get a feel of how these ACCs look. Here's the washout of that. You can see adenopathy present, left periodic region, not uncommon. And again, coronal views, both uh, routine CT and with cinematic rendering, nicely showing you the mass. Some more cinematic renderings with the central necrosis accentuated. And again, cinematic rendering is very good for looking at ACC by accentuating some of the changes in texture by accentuating some of the areas of necrosis. Now here's one of the cases where the clinical presentation is so important. This was a patient clinically presented with primary aldosteronism. Now if you look, you're gonna look for a small adrenal lesion and that will typically be resected. And sure enough, there's an adrenal lesion in the right adrenal gland. It's actually about 14 millimeters in size on the non-contrast scans. You give contrast, you see the lesion better. But it doesn't look all that impressive to me. Could it be an adenoma? That's probably my best thought looking at it. You can see it enhances to 101. You could look at the washout, but the patient was symptomatic. So if it was an adenoma, which is what you expect, this patient is gonna have it resected. And you can see it's there. Nice 1.4 centimeter lesion felt to be just an aldosteronoma, resected, the patient's cured. It was resected, and I just wanted to show it to you as you go through the motion of looking through the volume. Again, it's off the medial limb, just very, very simple lesion. There's no reason to suspect anything else. And this is the case that kind of really makes you worried. This was resected, and at the end of the day, the pathologist did not call this a benign lesion, but called it a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. It was low grade, it had sharp margins, the patient is being watched conservatively, it's not gonna be put on chemotherapy, there's no additional surgery necessary, but it does make the point, wow, looking at that lesion, there's no way you would ever call it a, or rule out ACC. If you said rule out ACC in that case, you would say rule out ACC in every adrenal lesion you look at. Now here's a great case. I won't go into this in great detail. We talk about compound tumors. That's where there's a lesion present and you get a second tumor. This patient had a known left adrenal mass for a long time. And you can see it, it's fat density, so macroscopic fat. It's a myelolipoma. The patient presented now with more symptoms. Okay, there's the myelolipoma. 
But now you look in the front of the lesion, there's a solid mass. Now, myelolipomas can grow, but not that fast. Also, this is solid. That's worrisome. Yes, you can say maybe it's a myelolipoma that grew. This was resected. This was a compound tumor. This was a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma arising in a myelolipoma. Just a spectacular case. Okay, what else can we think about? Adrenal lymphoma. We typically see adrenal involvement by lymphoma when there's multiple organ involvement, the liver, the spleen, maybe the pancreas, adenopathy. On CT, an adrenal lymphomatous mass can be homogeneous with washout features similar to other malignancies. Prior to treatment, calcification is rare. Now, of course, when you talk about bilateral, we do consider adrenals, we consider adenomas. One of the things about adrenal lymphoma, as you can see in this case, large adrenal mass, but there's also a large pancreatic mass. Could be pancreatic cancer, I guess, but you know it just looks big compared to the way the rest of the gland looks. And pancreatic cancer rarely goes to the adrenal, surely not such a large solid lesion. And this ended up being lymphoma. So lymphoma of the adrenal most commonly is with bilateral involvement and multiple organ involvement. And here's just some more images of that case. Again, nicely shown to you in the coronal view as well. Now some facts. Primary adrenal lymphoma is an unusual disease. I've diagnosed it several times. It has a very classic appearance and no one ever considers it. It's typically older men, bilateral involvement, 73% in one study, and approximately half of the patients develop symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. Uh, so it can present clinically. Most of the time, the patients have vague symptoms, weight loss, anorexia, or fatigue, and you'll make the diagnosis. Typically, they're large bilateral tumors over 10 centimeters in diameter with an infiltrative type pattern. The masses expand and infiltrate the glands, and interestingly, they maintain their triangular shape. In the cases I've been able to be very specific and say, yes, this is primary adrenal lymphoma, it's because you have very large glands bilateral, but they triangular in shape. Some primary adrenal lymphomas may manifest as masses with necrotic or cystic components, but that's gonna be less likely. And in those cases, separating it from ACC. Now, ACC is rarely bilateral, maybe 3% at best, but then we think about FIOs, which are 10% bilateral, and METs, which are not uncommonly bilateral. Here's a good example, large left adrenal mass infiltrating the perirenal space, peripancreatic and periotic adenopathy, very nicely seen. Here's another patient, large mass left adrenal gland, B-cell lymphoma. Again, non-contrast, but you could think of the differential diagnosis. This case also shows nicely that these lesions enhance, but not very significantly, as you can see. Nice example. What about this case? Large bilateral adrenal masses, solid. They do enhance, and interestingly, they also have areas of necrosis present. Here it is in the cinematic. The large lobular masses with areas of necrosis. Another B-cell lymphoma, large oval masses, kind of maintains the triangular shape, pushes on the kidney. With primary adrenal lymphoma, you often do not see any other disease. So you don't see liver, you don't see spleen, and you don't see adenopathy. Again, very nicely, the differential texture mapping between the right and left adrenal gland, very nicely shown on the cinematic rendering. Now, in that differential of bilateral adrenal masses, pheos, infection like TB, METs, adenomas, but lymphoma is there, okay? It's one of the causes. So primary adrenal lymphoma, big masses, triangular shape, looks like the adrenals, but there are no other findings. This article by Halashari, primary adrenal lymphoma without adenopathy, or other extra nodal involvement is rare. About two thirds of patients with bilateral adrenal involvement have adrenal insufficiency.
that may be helpful in reaching the diagnosis. Interesting, I've not seen that but in one case. Adrenal lymphoma tends to grow in an infiltrative pattern, maintaining the adrenoform appearance. Again, it gets really large, but it kind of looks like an adrenal shape. Mets don't do that. ACC doesn't do that. Theos don't do that. So again, a very, very important finding. Now, let me finish off this part three by mentioning that there are rare adrenal primary tumors. We see them so uncommonly. Here are four. Pleomorphic sarcoma, primary adrenal sarcoma, adrenal cortical cor carcinosarcoma. Ooh, what a big word. Primary epithelial sarcoma. Primary adrenal pleomorphic spindle cell sarcomas are extremely rare. Here's one of them. Large mass, some vascularity. Looks like malignancy. I would have said an ACC. I could have thrown lymphoma in there particularly the way it involves, or it seems to involve the kidney. This has impressive neovascularity, so we know we're dealing with a tumor. I typically will not get this diagnosis correct unless I'm being shown the case in conference because I'm going with adrenal cortical carcinoma. I'm not thinking of these rare, rare, unusual tumors of which there's only a handful, but again, something to remember. It's a possibility. Here it is on the cinematic rendering again, very nicely showing you the neovascularity of the tumor, the displacement of the kidney. Just an impressive example. Again, beautiful neovascularity. I really like cinematic rendering. We have an article coming out about this over the next few months, hopefully. Another example, large mass, adenopathy, ACC is a possibility. Lymphoma is a possibility, not primary lymphoma, but lymphoma involving the nodes and the adrenal gland. Again, an infiltrating tumor around the renal artery. On these images, it almost looks like kidney. The kidney would be displaced. This tumor is infiltrating. What could this be? Well, a very, very unusual angiosarcoma of the left adrenal gland. Just a very impressive with extension down toward the kidney, ascites present, again, looking maybe like lymphoma, metastasis, or even primary ACC. Now let's look at metastasis, but let's do this. Let's take a break. We'll come back and pick up on adrenal metastasis. So to summarize then, we think about big masses, ACC, lymphoma, which can be bilateral when it's primary adrenal lymphoma, and some unusual sarcomas. Again, the sarcomas are very rare, so you don't really need to typically worry about them, but it's just something every once in a while, you're gonna get back a path report with one of those wild diagnoses. So with that, see you in a few minutes. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.